The day arrives when life on Earth is practically ready to end. Unexpectedly, an unknown planet flies in from the depths of space to become a satellite of Earth to offer humanity its resources. The film begins with an epigraph, a story by a boy named Paul who speaks of the not-too-distant future of Earth, where people have exhausted all the resources of their planet. At this time, a planet appears in the sky, which is named Red Moon. Over several years, people mine a certain material on it, named Lumina, which serves as a source of energy. However, one day Red Moon, surrounded by an impenetrable magnetic field, changes its orbit and heads straight for Earth. Only one astronaut is given the task to destroy the dangerous planet, but shortly before the launch, he disappears. Now an adult Paul, guided by his own childhood voice, makes his way through the wall into the slums where now the majority of Earth's population lives. He wanders around the settlement for some time, looking into the gray, emaciated faces. People are tormented as not a single drop of rain has fallen for almost 1,000 days. Suddenly, Paul sees a pair of armored police officers around whom a scout robot is swirling, and he asks the first man he encounters to help find a taxi. The man leads him to his workshop where he offers an old, used car on a gravitational cushion. The man is seeing for the first time someone who has crossed the wall in this direction and assumes Paul did it because of a girl. But Paul doesn't want to disappoint the guy and agrees to pay the required amount. While Paul is examining his purchase, checking the charge, which according to the former owner is almost full, the scout robot finds him. But when the police break into the workshop, Paul is already gone. He drives through the barren desert, listening to a radio message about the disappearance of the fashionable astronaut himself. And his inner childhood voice asks Paul to find the forest depicted in an ancient drawing, though what awaits him there, Paul does not know. Suddenly, the hero's car breaks down. It urgently needs a replacement Lumina battery, and from nowhere, a scout robot appears. Paul pulls out a pistol and tries to shoot down the spy, but his hands shake and he misses. Then the man injects some kind of drug into his wrist and with the next shot, knocks down the scout. He has to push the car to a shop standing in the middle of the desert, listening to the enthusiastic advertisements for Lumina, thanks to which there will be enough energy for many years. He walks past a man getting drunk and enters the small shop where he finds a teenage girl behind the counter. Elma can order a battery delivery, but it will take a long time to wait. However, Paul has no choice. On the television, he sees a report stating that because of Paul's escape, his brother Elliot has taken on the mission to blow up Red Moon. The project was launched by the founder of the Space Goods Corporation, named Henry, who is their father. Elliot takes off, but he fails to overcome the magnetic field and the ship disappears, ceasing to send signals. Distraught, Paul steps out into the stormy wind, remembering an episode from his childhood. His mother on her deathbed, his father brings his sons to say goodbye. And when the boy realizes that something terrible is happening, he runs out into the street and he is struck by lightning. Paul wakes up in his car, feeling his hands tremble. However, his childhood voice advises against taking the medicine that helped last time, suggesting their father is mistaken. Meanwhile, Elma, wanting to forget about the approaching storm, turns on the music and dances, locking herself in her room. Then she develops photos of her mother. Suddenly, she hears a TV reminder about the search for Paul, who uniquely proved it's possible to manually overcome the magnetic field of the Red Moon. The girl packs her things, but her father stops her from leaving the trailer, not wanting to let his daughter go, as danger is everywhere. Two children find a capsule in the desert with a bloodied but alive Elliot inside. However, when he opens his eyes, his pupils are altered. Meanwhile, Elma comes to Paul and asks to take her with him. The man refuses, and the girl walks back to her trailer. Elliot is examined, and it's understood that the magnetic field of the red moon altered his DNA, and then something seemingly brought him back to life. Henry tries to encourage his son because he blames himself for the failure. Suddenly, Elliot remembers the last day spent with their mother. He used to climb a rock, look at the sea, and think if he jumped down, his mother would recover. But he never dared to do it. One day, Paul came to the rock, smiled, saying he would help save their mother, and jumped into the water himself. And now he promises to find his brother. At this time, the police catch up to Paul. Elma sees how the man hides in an old bathtub and slips away from his pursuers. Elma's father finds a photo of his hated wife and sets his daughter's trailer on fire. The next day, Elliot arrives at their gas station, but the father says he never saw him. 
Paul, seeing what's happening, secretly removes a battery from his car for his brother. And it seems Elliot looks straight into the soul of the gas station owner. He makes him remember the pain of his wife leaving and the pain he causes his daughter. Elliot says the man has suffered enough. The last thoughts of the man seem to support this statement. The man shoots himself in the temple. Seeing her father's death through the window, Elma starts running. Discovering the battery missing, Elliot sends a small scout robot after the girl. Elma, tired, sits down on the roadside where Paul finds her and takes her with him. Meanwhile, the courier with the Lumina battery ordered by Paul finally arrives at the store. Elliot takes it and sets off in pursuit. Later in the desert, Paul again tries to get rid of Elma, but she blackmails him into taking her along, promising to help find the forest. Later, Paul remembers the past, where he dreamt of his mother trying to tell him something. It's not the first time, so his father scolds him, talking about the harm of illusions. Then Paul tells his brother that he also appears in his dreams, but completely differently, as if dead and much older. In the present, the pair reaches a checkpoint. Their car is taken under external control and stops by a police order, but Elma is now behind the wheel. They deceive the guard, and he allows them to pass. Sometime later, Paul and Elma reach a roadside cafe where the man calls his father, saying that the Red Moon should not be destroyed and that sending his brother there was also a mistake as he died. Henry denies this, responding that he wanted to save his wife, but she asked him to do nothing, just to believe. Eventually, due to his inaction, she died. The conversation is interrupted by the police arriving at the cafe. Paul gets into a fight and almost dies, but Elma saves him. The couple flees. On the way, the girl cries, realizing the horror she just experienced, and Paul tells her about his childhood visions of the future. When the red moon appeared and people began mining Lumina from it, he knew it was wrong, but couldn't explain why. Later, Paul conducted research and found out that the strange planet had appeared before. Each time it came close, changes occurred, after which life on Earth seemed to be reborn. Paul showed his findings to his father and argued that it's best to leave the planet alone. In response, Henry ordered his son to take the very medicine. Now he throws away the syringe with the medicine. He discusses the red moon with Elma. He believes it reacts to human actions and responds to evil with evil. Meanwhile, Elliot appears in the cafe, convincing the owner that her husband will never return and induces her to voluntarily leave life. Meanwhile, Paul shows Elma a drawing of the forest, explaining that it is the last thing left from his visions. If he reaches it, he might understand what he needs to do. They go to sleep, not noticing a robot that has infiltrated their car. In the morning, the girl suddenly admits that she turned him in for a reward, but this was before he agreed to take her with him. Nevertheless, Paul allows Elma to travel with him. Soon he notices a tail, and trying to escape from Elliot, who is pursuing them, he drives into the center of a dust storm. Thanks to the detection and destruction of the spy robot, Paul and Elma manage to escape. Eventually, they reach an old cinema where they watch a film about nature that once existed on Earth. The girl is enchanted by the unprecedented spectacle, not believing that such a thing was real. And suddenly, Paul jumps up in surprise. The image of the forest from his childhood visions exactly matches a scene from this film. It means he is indeed just crazy, longing for a picture. At this time, Elliot, accompanied by the police, catches up with the fugitives. Seeing them at the entrance, Elma wakes Paul, and he devises a plan in which he will pretend the girl is a hostage so they can escape. He leads her outside at gunpoint, but this does not stop Elliot. On his silent command, one of the squad members shoots and wounds Elma. Paul manages to put her in the car and jumps behind the wheel himself. A chase begins. The injured Elma asks for the control box, and when the car reaches the checkpoint, she orders Paul to take off. But Elliot continues the pursuit, and the chase goes into the clouds. Yet Paul crashes and falls down. He sees the girl lying on the ground and Elliot standing over her, reminding his brother that he always spoke of the Red Moon as a mother. The truth is that only Paul can destroy it, and Henry will make him do it. But if Paul wants to save the girl, he will have to destroy himself. Paul points the gun at his temple, but in the last moment, he kills not himself but Elliot. He screams in pain of loss, not believing what he has done, but gathering himself, he takes Elma and goes to a nearby lighthouse by the dried up sea, where they once lived as a family and where his mother died. At the base of her cross, Paul finds an album in which he drew his visions. 
Eventually, the hero realizes that he can no longer run away and decides to return to the space base to fly to the Red Moon. He is met by Henry while the injured Alma is taken away by a medical assistance vehicle where the girl is cared for. At this time, Paul boards the spaceship and heads to the Red Moon. However, approaching, Paul switches to manual control. He overcomes the planet's magnetic field, but instead of blowing it up, he initiates the destruction of his own ship. On Earth, Elma flips through the album of Paul's childhood drawings, which depict everything that happened throughout the story. There's even a smiley face sticker that the girl gave to the astronaut when they first met. Via video link, Paul says goodbye to his father, and then his ship explodes before reaching the Red Moon. And on Earth, the first rain in many years falls, under which Elma stands with an umbrella.